When you know, you know. When you don't know, you don't know. We held back on Joanna Mamombe because we are revolutionaries. And at the same time as Kadath, we support Zanubia. We support anything to do with the Revolutionary Party, with the Zapu and everything. But when it comes to an end, we need to talk about people who we think imbue what revolutionary means. Are they mistaken? Yes, they may be mistaken on some certain things. But thanks to Comrade E.D. Nagagwa, I know, I know, Kwadas, I know, Kwadas, you do not like us using Nagagwa's name because he's not light. Mdara Afarirwe, Toshi Ziva. However, he has imbued one certain thing. Openness. Let's talk. Ngati Tauri. Ngati Wonesane. In Zanu PF, politically, it's called Kuonesana. Ngati Wonesane. You are only Fariri. Inini and Duku Fariri. Todi. We held this podcast watch list from February because Chaichka internally what our fellow cadres would do. Masambaka Zuchinja during the year. And we are going to talk that issue in a podcast. Tichi criticize our own fellow cadres. But today we are talking about Joanna Mamobi. We do not agree with a lot of her policies. This woman, I don't agree with a lot of her policies, but game recognize game, nigga. She and me. So, we are going to be discussing it today as a woman and as a politician and so forth. Do we agree with her policies? Hell no. But is she a patriot? We agree with her. We do believe that she is a patriot. She is a cadre. And we will pay attention to what she has to say. Do we agree with what she says? No, she doesn't. But today, we listen to Joanna Mamom. This podcast, you're going to see, we're just sending it and just dropping it as it is. But, I know But our ideology, our sense of purpose is important, comrades. We need a sense of purpose. A sense of purpose. The fear of being out an outcast within the party should stop. So we are dropping it. Hit your dislikes, hit your likes, hit us up on our private WhatsApps or the WhatsApp status and tell us what you think. We know this is not what you want us to put. We know that. Truth is here. And for those who don't understand the conversation, just listen to Joanna Mamombe. She is a Zimbabwean. She is a watch list cadre and she is some female that you need to be paying attention to. This is us, Roger out. My name is Joanna Mamombe. I'm the member of parliament representing Harare West constituents uh, and I'm currently the youngest MP in the ninth parliament. Um, but my journey didn't just start uh, from me being an MP. Okay. You see, um, by profession, I'm a molecular biologist uh, I have trained um, from Chino University of Technology. I have done biotechnology. I went on to do my master's in molecular biology in Norway. And I also uh, finished my uh, master's in UK wow. at the University of Sussex. So by training, I'm a molecular biologist. Wow. Uh, but also on the side of activism, 
uh, I started my uh, politics or my activism at Chinoy University of Technology when I've been a student leader. So I've been on the forefront of student activism, okay. uh, of human rights, of gender issues, you see, on all those uh, activism issues uh, from my days uh, at Chinoy University. So I rose with ranks from the Student Representative Council wow. uh, to joining the one of the leading uh, student unions uh, in Zimbabwe, which is called the Zimbabwe National Students Union, okay. ZINASU, yes. yes ZINASU, so I've yes. rose through the ranks of that uh, student's movement, uh, ZINASU, to the um, uh, to the highest position of being a gender secretary in that union. Wow. Then after that, I've also joined, uh, I also joined uh, MDC, which is uh, the leading opposition in Zimbabwe, yes. So I also joined the Movement for Democratic Change during my days as a student leader. So therefore I raised uh, bit by bit with the ranks uh, in the opposition party to the point where I got elected last year as a member of parliament for Harare West constituents. Linjani, Linjani, Magadi, Magadi, hello, hello. Welcome to The Watch List, a weekly commentary that tracks upcoming power brokers within Zimbabwe and SADC every Thursday. In an effort to provide more layers and substance to our weekly Sunday podcast, we here at The Revolutionary Star have decided to provide a feeder audio that gives you more context and background information to the individuals that we cover on our weekly analysis every Sunday. So, that being said, Today is Thursday, the 11th of February, and my name is Comrade Super Cabral, and today's first watch list card is the firebrand and upcoming political member of our society here in Zimbabwe, who is a current uh, member of parliament. Her name is Joanna Mamombe. That is who we are going to be talking about today. A shout out to the talk show, Nisia Mashusha Official, which is on YouTube. You guys go check it out. We use some of their audio for this podcast and we'd like to check it out. Go subscribe, listen to them. Great uh, talk show that they did with uh, Joanna Mamumbe. We actually got to learn a lot about her as we were doing our research. So before we get into Joanna Mamumbe or what, today's topic is about her specifically we just want to mention that we are starting off with an mdc cadre who is a comrade in our view because whether or not he's opposition or anything if you have those revolutionary ethos you are a comrade you are a cadre we may disagree we may be on different battlefronts but we are still comrades at arms right that's the same as same way that zipra and uh, zandla we're all fighting for the war but at the same time they at times actually fought against each other it's the same thing so we are saying that comrade mamombe is going to be our first revolutionary that we are going to discuss today she's upcoming she's a firebrand and we see her as the future we see her as the future we may not agree with all of the policies but she definitely is the future she represents what it is to be a woman she's taking that baton from margaret dongo and stepping forward as we said in our previous podcast that margaret dongo is the marker that we use when we are defining what it is for women in the patriarchal society here in zimbabwe as well as the phd the pull her down syndrome uh, Comrade Mamombe addresses both these things and she is aware of these things as a female. Not only is she smart, but she is aware of the injustices that she has to suffer. Besides from ZANU PF, but internally from her own party, which is MDC Alliance or MDCT at large. So as a woman, we have to give kudos where kudos is due. And for her, it is due that she is picking up the fight. She espouses a lot of the things here at the Revolutionary Star that we have always been talking about when it comes to women, when it comes to Amilka Cabral, when it comes to Lumumba, when it comes to Sankara, all of those ethos, the deconstruction of what it is to be a woman, the reinvigoration and trying to change the way we look at traditional values from an organic African culture point of view, which is not Western capital capitalistic that is exactly what we see with this uh young kada of course she has her faults but she is growing so that being said today is thursday 
the 11th of February. And again, as we said, the first watch list cadre is going to be the firebrand and upcoming political member of parliament, Joanna Mamombe. Right. Before we define Comrade Mamombe, let us give you a brief description of who Joan of Arc was. Because we see Mamombe as Joan of Arc. Most people would think Joan of Arc, the best example would be Mbuya Nyanda. But no, she has tendencies and, uh, aura about it that reminds us of Joan of Arc. So, before we get into Mamombe, who was Joan of Arc? Well, Joan of Arc claimed to have received visions of the Archangel, Archangel Michael, Saint Margaret, and Saint Catherine of Alexandria, instructing her to support Charles the Seventh to recover France from English domination late in the Hundred Years' War. That sounds like Brianian. You see a vision, you go with that vision and you claiming it, uh, people rally behind you as a banner and then you fight against injustices that are being done to you by the current administration that is in charge at the time. On the 23rd of May 1430, this is Joan of Arc, she was captured at Compiègne by the Burgundy faction, a group of French nobles allied with the English. She was later handed over to the English and put on trial by the pro-English Bishop Pierre Cajon. You know, it's also these Africans, you don't know how to describe and say these French words. So it's, it will be Cajon or Caucon, uh, C-H-U, uh, C-A-U-C-H-O-N. That's the spelling of the last name. Apologies, I'm African. So she was charged on a variety of charges. After Caucon, Declared her guilty, she was burned at the stake on the 30th of May, 1431, dying at the age of 19. In 19, in 1456, an inquisitorial, inquisitorial court authorized by Pope Calixtus III examined the trial that had happened previously and debunked the charges against her, thus pronouncing her innocent and she was then declared a martyr. In the 16th century, she became a symbol of the Catholic League and in 1803, she was declared a national symbol for France by the decision of Napoleon Bonaparte. That is Joan of Arc in a nutshell. She, people rallied behind her. Once they rallied behind her, she carried a cause. That cause got her killed and then she was later on made a national hero. Mamombe, from a... Uh, ideological point of view she's cut from this cloth she has that same fabric and she's not going to get killed that's not what we wish on her but i'm saying she's cut from that same cloth this is the same cloth that we can say the buyane hand has had it's got nothing to do with your political ideology or what you believe in it's just who you are as in uno diam soro une zvindi but zvindi zozo is what drives you to do what you do that craziness that i don't give a damn attitude is the one that pushes you forward on the things that get things done joanna mamombe gets shit done that's why we are talking about it today so who is Joanna Mamombe. Well, Joanna Ruvimbo Mamombe was born on the 18th of June 1993. She's a Zimbabwean politician, a former student leader, and a member of the Movement for Democratic Change, which is MDC Alliance. She 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 rolls with Tamisa, right? That's who she is. So this is the activist, uh, student activist uh, side of the game. She is not a trade unionist note that we if you are not sure what we are talking about here the revolutionary style we ask you to revert back to the podcast when we talk about mdc alliance so that you can understand the differences in the subtleties between uh, people who grew up from the student activist days compared to those who grew up from the uh, trade con uh, trade, uh, trade unionist days there's a difference between the way these people look at uh, politics she is known this is Mamombe, to be one of the youngest Zimbabwean members of parliament right now, representing Harare West. As the current uh, publication of this post, she has not yet been recalled by Mwanzora. So right now, her party is being held hostage by the MDCT, and Mwanzora hasn't recalled it, so she's still the MP as we speak it, right? She was born in Harare. She had her secondary education at Monte Casino Girls High School, so you already know she was one of those nerds. Monte Cassino, Christy Mambo, any person who grew up in Zimbabwe knows that if you went to those type of schools, you were a nerd. You were not the, 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 the chick that most people would want to hook up with because you were a brain box. Most of the time, you just study 
and you only hung out with people that you studied with so your people who you knew were either from Kutama, St. Ignatius or Sandringham, Borders basically it was just study, study, study and she proves that because she then proceeded to Chinoya University of Technology she graduated with a bachelor's degree in biotechnology while she was at that university she served as the gender officer for the Zimbabwe National Students Union that's Zinasu Zinasu is associated with MDC Alliance. Please note that Zinasu is associated with Z- uh, MDC Alliance or MDC as a party. Let me not say Alliance. MDC in general is a Zinasu. Zinasu is a creature of that uh, way of thinking. So again, note she has her background in student activism, not unionist, trade unionist upgrading. She does not have that. Note that. After graduating from Chinoya University of Technology, she furthered her education by going to the University of Bergen in Norway, where she attained a master's degree in molecular biology. Mamombe joined politics after completing her studies in Norway. Uh, this is around 2018. And in that same year when she did that, she was elected as the member of parliament representing Harare West under the ticket for MDC Alliance. Uh, it, these are the elections that were held. And July 30th of 2018, she was sworn into office. So she had a meteoric rise. That's pretty much what we're saying here. She's coming back from Norway and she just rises. She's got that background. This is Nelson Chamisa's guy. She's a student. She grew up in that type of fabric. She is the future when it comes to student activism. That has its shortfalls. But I'm trying to make you understand who she is as a person. This podcast is about you understanding her as a person. She is a student activist by nature. And she grew up in that environment where her leaders were people like uh, Nelson Chamisa, who was uh, the leader of Zinasu at one point in time. She never became president of Zinasu. Right. She rose within the ranks to a gender portfolio, but she never got to those things. But again, we mentioned this in a previous podcast that Chamisa has been surrounding himself with students, lawyers, which has some sort of rubbed the wrong way, the union side of the game. Right. The ones who are blue collar workers within the party of MDC. However, he has to do this because this is where his roots are as well. Right. This, this is just politics. It's got nothing to do with uh, the country. But I want you to understand who she is. On March the 2nd, 2019, she was arrested and charged with treason. It was alleged that she was attempting to overthrow a constitutionally elected government uh, led by Emerson Munangaga when she led a protest on the 14th of January 2018. This chick has just come back from uh, Norway, right? And she's just rose real fast and become an MP. She's diaspora. Any person who's been in the diaspora knows that when you come back into Zimbabwe, you are very naive. And this is where she still is up until now. But she's surrounded by firebrands. So it's going to take a time for her to become matured and polished. But you need to understand that, right? But she came in with a baptism of fire, right? And she became a threat right off the bat. She is part of that entourage that is Team Chamisa all the way. She is so much of a threat, comrades. Monzora has not yet recalled her. Why? Because it might just do more damage to MDCT than good. There are several people within MDC Alliance who are not being recalled for that specific reason. Some of them are counselors. They don't get called because it may do more damage than good. So anyway, I'm trying to make you understand this treason charge. This is somebody who is still coming in from Norway, uh, a socialist type of country with a welfare state. And she has seen how the ideals of democracy from a first world country are practiced. She sees that and she wants that implemented here in Zimbabwe. So Shungu Zipo big time big time and she's willing to fight that so that makes her a threat at the same time it makes her naive right joanna mamombe is a mdc legislator for harare her cecilia chimbiri who is the mdc youth national vice chairperson and netsai marova who is the youth deputy organizing secretary for mdc alliance remember what we told you again in our previous podcast uh, organizing secretary is the same as a political commissar 
and this is a woman this is Netai Marova but we'll talk about it in another episode right these three individuals were arrested on the 13th of May for leading an anti-government protest taking place that day over the authorities response to the COVID-19 outbreak and hunger in the country they were arrested at a police roadblock manned by police and soldiers near Warren Park right this is uh, along Bulawayo Road Warren Park is always heavily manned. Uh, Zivarase, Kwa, Kuwadzana. That whole area there is a lot of soldiers from the Congo War that live and reside there. It's a security area, basically. Right? And uh, for some reason that we'll get on in one of our later podcasts, it's a, it's very important that even the demonstrations that happened, uh, that got a lot of fanfare at that same time, they started from DZ. But a lot of soldiers are there. Presidential guard lives there. They have got houses there, everything. So this is where the roadblock happened. And they were actually arrested there under the pretext that they were being taken to Warren Park Police Station. According to them now, their heads were covered in sacks, uh, hood sacks, or just hoods. They were hooded up. And then they were driven to an unknown uh, location where they were beaten underneath their uh, feet as in the soles of their feet and then they were sexually assaulted and they were forced to eat shit human excrement right on the 14th of may the national police spokesperson uh paul nati who i who has not yet been under sanctions but godwin matanga from last week is now under sanctions uk sanctions now back to paul nati paul nati confirmed their arrest right he said he was not aware where they were being held right on the same day the police denied the activists were in their custody why i'm mentioning this this uh lack of miscommunication between departments within zitara p is what mdc uses as an example that it's state capture right it would be a, a CIO, Central Intelligence Organization, or the uh, uh, Military Intelligence Department that would have overruled the police department. Thus, this miscommunication happens. This lapse or this uh, gap within proper due process and due diligence when it comes to apprehending uh, uh, suspected uh, suspects uh, who are not yet proven guilty. They say that this is an example of state capture. This is why we had to mention this. Anyway back to our original thing about her the three activists were later found in the early hours of friday the 15th of may dumped in pindura 87 kilometers from marari with their clothes torn and brutally assaulted by the way uh cecilia chembiri is from pindura her father is a war veteran he is pro mdc but he is a war veteran he fought within the war and it's yes believe it or not there are a lot of war veterans who support mtc so just uh, throwing it out there it's not always what you think when you hear these ngos say war veterans and you think all war veterans are zanu pf that's a lie anyway moving on so these three females were hospitalized and whilst in the hospital the authorities charged them for breaching section 37 of the criminal code which is gathering without intent to promote with the intent to promote public violence breach of peace and this charge provides of a provides an imprisonment of up to five years or a fine for both it's part of uh, section 5 uh, clause 3 and 1 of the statutory instrument 99 which was passed in 2020 that prohibits gatherings and provides for a one-year imprisonment or a fine this is around the time of covid so that's where this statutory instrument is coming from right so that's what it is this is what happened now they go through the whole rigmarole of what it is to go through the system. And then on the 10th of June, they were rearrested while they were at their lawyer's offices. They were accused of lying about their torture and charged with Section 31A1 Part 3 of the Criminal Law Act, which is communicating or publishing false statements prejudicial to the state, as well as 184 Section 1F of the Criminal Law Act, which is defeating or obstructing the course of justice as defined in Section 184, 16, Part 5. If I'm not going to go into the details because this is he said, she said. So we don't want to give a biased version. But basically the government is saying that these chicks are lying and these chicks are saying the government is lying. 
They were denied jail on the 15th of June and remanded in custody until the 26th of June. Whilst in custody, they were denied access to food and basically they were complaining, right? But once you're in jail, you're in jail. You know, once you've signed up for what you're doing, if you are a revolutionary and you're a comrade, it is what it is. So again, we're just going to call this all spin. When you get into politics, especially in Africa, comrades, you are told, you know, just like how they tell you when you're about to uh, revenge, build uh, two graves, one for the person you're going to kill and one for yourself. In politics, they've got the same line, but it's different. They tell you before you get into politics, make sure you have your bail money on hand. Make sure whoever is rolling with you, you have their money for bail and a lawyer on hand. This is just a game. You may not like it and your human rights and so forth, You may, but this is how it is. Whether you're Zanu PF or MDC, any politician knows when you get in the game, these are the rules to the game, right? So we are not going to get into details of human rights and everything because it's political spin. When another revolutionary hears this or a politician hears this, it's just spin. You're trying to get sympathy. Maybe you're trying to recruit to fundraise money or you want a visa to leave the country like the even Mawaridays and so forth. So whatever it is, we don't, we gloss over it because you're just hustling. It's a hustle. But you know that this is what is going to get you in the game, right? And you had already been warned by your mentors that this is what's going to happen. So let's skip over that. Their lawyers appealed to the high court and eventually the high court granted them bail on the 26th of June under conditions which included a, a bail a deposit of 10,000 uh, Zimbabwe dollars and they had to report three times a week to the police and it also barred them from communicating about their matter directly or otherwise with any of the public or private media including social media and they've been following this until recently they have on the day of their arrest on the 10th of June 2020 all everything that I'm talking about is last year please note I haven't been saying the year this is last year 2020 we are in 2021 the nine UN special rapporteurs called for an end to abductions and torture and called for their charges to be immediately dropped. Some government officials, including the Minister of Justice, the Permanent Secretary and the Minister of Media, Information and, Pro and Broadcasting have dismissed their disappearance and claimed that everything that these three females have been talking about was stage managed. The Minister of Justice has come out calling for their arrest. The Minister of Home Affairs has also come out saying that these women are lying and that they are just uh, seeking Western sympathy. Again, this is politics, comrades. Both sides are just peddling uh, politics. Don't listen to both sides. Uh, don't listen to the Mamombes. Don't listen to ZANU PF. The truth is in the middle. Unfortunately, our press is not good at, at that because it's partisan. They stick to the side that bre uh, butters their bread. But for you as revolutionaries, both sides have a grain of truth in it. So we just want you to know that, right? The doctors, same thing. Doctors are also partisan here in Zimbabwe. Don't be fooled about personal integrity and professionalism. Lies. Doctors are partisan as well. They f fall under certain... Uh, Para parameters of where their biases uh, lie right so when the doctors who examined the females said that they were tortured the government was also obviously going to react so everything that we're going to not talk about here is just bs it's political bs and we are not here to try and say this is correct and that's not correct because we as revolutionaries know that they signed up for the game they know what the game is and they are just fighting amongst each other the public is going to listen to it and emotionally get attached for a little bit but then move on because it really doesn't affect the themselves on a personal basis right so this is who this uh, woman is uh, she has been in and out of jail these past few months right certain uh, temporary measures uh, statutory instruments she's been out here doing what she does why are we mentioning uh, mamombe she's in the power matrix structure of zimbabwe whether or not you don't like her, whether or not you don't think she is a credible candidate, whether or not you are a ZANU PF Kada and you think she's an MGC Muchinja Anabasa. One, she's a female. Two, she has proven that she is willing to go the long route to get what she wants. Right? She goes to jail. Right? She handles jail very well and she continuously comes out and she does it. 
three within her own circle she has yet not yet been recalled by the faction within mdct that's trying to uh get chamisa off his pedestal as having the ground or the political clout amongst zimbabweans as we speak this is a diamond in the rough comrade it's somebody who you need to pay attention to and you need to pay attention to the people around there as well the cecilia chambiris the Nitsai Marovas. These are organizers. When, remember what we told you about organizing secretary in Zanu PF, that's the same as the political commissar. This female works nema PC. Anofamba nema commissar. She is not to be fucked with. If you are a Zanu PF person listening to this podcast, you need to pay attention to this female. Not because you agree with her values or anything, but because she's just like you. She is a cadre. Right? She's a comrade and she thinks like you. Wes, you may not have gone to jail. She's gone to jail. She's seen the worst you can do. This female right now has a visa to go back to Norway if she wants. Best believe, don't believe that because of what she's already gone through. Right? With the Biden administration coming into power, she is going to be even more valuable. She's going to start getting awards and everything, but she's got her stripes. And she has a mentor in Nelson Chamisa who was taught by Morgan Shangirai and Tendai BT and so forth. She's not to be fucked with. If we were to compare her to uh, politicians within ZANU PF, I would put her in the same group as Opam Chunguri. This is the Opam Chunguri of, uh, of uh, ZANU PF. This is the, uh, the woman who just uh, fled to Mozambique. The name is missing me right now. Who, who fled to Mozambique. Certain women within ZANU PF, Senator Hungwe is another example. Uh, people who've seen and struggled, who've gone to jail, who knows how fucked up it is dealing with men. Have you, as you've heard in the audio, she said, men try to put a ceiling. Women try to put a ceiling. She is aware. This woman is cognizant. As a molecular biologist, she is very aware of the pitfall she is suffering from and she has the acumen to actually deal with it so we wanted to her to be our first cadre on the watch list if you know what time it is as a revolutionary and you know what we stand for you need to observe her not only her but the people who surround her she is not as important as the people she surrounds that's why we say she's the joan of arc or she could be the joan of arc because she can get people to come to her banner why is that is because she cuts through the noise the people around her are commissars commissars are the people around her lieutenants who are on the ground massagent if you're in the army you would say this woman she moves with sergeants so that makes a threat and it makes a somebody who here as a revolutionary star when we discuss issues we will be having it on our list of cadres who we are here discussing here at the watch list so for today our first cadre was comrade MP Joanna Mamombe and this has been me Comrade Super Cabral coming out here on a Thursday saying wherever you are we hope you have a great day Roger out yeah being in politics on its own you know it's it's a challenge you see and also being a young person and being a woman that's a challenge on its own so I would say that um, one of the challenges uh, is the personal risk you see the Zimbabwean politics you know it's very um, uh, violent in nature and it's very patriarchal as well uh, so I would say that you face resistance from your colleagues that is wow. the male counterparts you oh, see because to exactly because to penetrate in politics you see when you're a woman it's very difficult mm -hmm. because of the nature of politics you know our systems and our culture they're very patriarchal in nature so being a woman it's very difficult to penetrate in those spaces and also being a young person remember there are also older women who are in oh, politics yes. already oh, yes. who also can create ceilings so that us the young women cannot, cannot you know penetrate. cannot exactly cannot penetrate so that's uh, the other uh, challenge that I faced but nonetheless the personal risk you see the issues of harassment the issues of abuses torture and arrests 
you see. So politics, especially in opposition, comes with a, a lot of personal risk. So I have faced that as well. I've been arrested a lot of times. I've been beaten up. I've been, um, I've slept in jail for months. I've, sp I've slept uh, on, a, on a hospital bed after being admitted, after being beaten up by police, you know, in this country. So I would say that personal risk on its own, it's a challenge that uh, if somebody wants to get in politics, they should be prepared to face, uh, you know, those challenges. Uh, but all in all, I think if you're determined, you can, you know, you can reach where you go or where you want to go.